The choices of working with Microsoft Office on an iPhone or an iPad are just a little confusing these days. But actually, Microsoft Office has a long history of working on Apple devices over the years. Yeah, I just got back from a meeting, so. Why? Why were you at a meeting? Well, yeah, I do work stuff too. Come on, I've been running Microsoft Office for years. Microsoft Office work stuff. Oh, boy. Well, oh, I knew this day would come. PC. Now, while there has been a long history of Microsoft Office running on Macs, over many, many years now. The story is just a little bit different when it comes to the iPhone, which was introduced in 2007, and the iPad, which was introduced in 2010. When the iPad was introduced in 2010, there were actually no official Microsoft apps available for the iPad. Microsoft just didn't make any. So when we wanted to edit a Microsoft Word document, for example, we couldn't open up the Microsoft Word app. We had to use a smattering of other apps uh, in order to do this. And it was kind of a laborious, bulky process to flip back and forth between different apps and some of the formatting just didn't look all that great. At the same time, Microsoft was telling us that if we needed to get some real professional work done, then the iPad wasn't the right device to use we needed to use a Microsoft Surface device instead, which of course came from Microsoft, and it did offer the quote, full Microsoft Office experience. But then in February 2014, Microsoft named a new CEO that came after Steve Ballmer. Mr. Nadella came in and sort of changed the course that Microsoft was on. And he came up with this phrase where he said, Microsoft was now focused on a mobile first, cloud first world. So it's this coming together uh, that we refer to as a cloud for everyone and every device. And today's briefing is all about giving you what is, I would say, the first step on a journey of making this a great innovation vector for all of Microsoft. Among other things, this new Microsoft focus on mobile first and cloud first meant that they didn't really care what computing device you used. They just wanted to make sure that you were using the Microsoft Office software. So in March 2014, Microsoft finally released the Microsoft Word app for the iPad, along with an Excel app and a Microsoft PowerPoint app. So in this cloud-first, mobile-first world, Microsoft is absolutely focused on empowering people to get more done wherever they need to and on any device. Now to start this, I'm going to go to my iPad. Now, Microsoft is absolutely committed to creating great mobile applications. And one of my favorites, OneDrive. So let me go ahead and open that OneDrive app. And thanks to cloud storage with OneDrive, I have access to all my content on all my devices, including, of course, my iPad. And I can get access to it right away. So I'm going to go ahead and open this Word document here. And you see, it brings it up in the native viewer. And But unfortunately, this is what happens. Um, my, my doc actually has a table of contents. It's gone. Uh, my, my graphics are on top of my text. And if I scroll down, I see that there's a bunch of text kind of jumbled on the side. I can't even read it at all. If I only had the real office for iPad, I could get more done. Well, it turns out, as of today, you do. So approximately 11 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, Office for iPad goes live in the App Store, very specifically Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, live for everyone to download and enjoy. And as you can see, this is Word on the iPad. And as you'd expect, my document looks amazing. There's my table of contents. If I scroll down, you can see there's embedded graphics, even my footnotes, everything looks perfect. Then in February 2021, Microsoft released a single Office app for the iPad. Now this wasn't actually something brand new. A year before that in February 2020, Microsoft released a single Office app for the iPhone. It's just we had to wait a whole year until we could get the single Office app for the iPad. But now there's just a little bit of confusion as to which apps do we need to use. All of the Office apps, the single Office app and the individual apps are free to download. You can download them onto your iPhone or iPad and for completely free, you can view 
office files such as a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or a PowerPoint presentation. And on most iOS devices, you can create files and save them locally to your iPhone or your iPad. You can't save them up into the cloud until you get a subscription to Microsoft 365. That can be a personal or a business subscription or even the higher end Office 365 subscriptions as well. Once you have a subscription to Microsoft 365 or Office 365, you then can unlock and open up all of the features in all of the apps. You have full editing capabilities and rights within these apps and you can save files now even into cloud storage services. Obviously OneDrive from Microsoft, but also iCloud Drive and Dropbox, etc. When it comes to the iPad, there's one other little confusing tidbit here and it depends upon the size of your iPad screen. Uh, sounds a little confusing, but I think, I think Microsoft's thought process here is that the larger screen on your iPad that you have, the more probability that you're going to be doing some serious professional work. So the larger screens have a restriction. Uh, here's how they break it down. If your iPad screen is 10.1 inches or smaller, which really today is only the iPad mini, and then maybe if you have an older iPad that has a nine and a half inch or under a 10 inch screen. If your screen is 10.1 inches or smaller, you can still download the apps for free, view documents and create documents. If your iPad screen is larger than 10.1 inches, which is pretty much all the iPads today, except for the mini, and certainly for the iPad Pros, which are 11 inch and 12.9 inches. If your iPad screen is greater than 10.1 inches, then the only thing you can do on those devices is view Microsoft Office files. You can't create, you can't do any editing, you must get a subscription to Microsoft 365 or Office 365 in order to unlock all of those capabilities. It seems that Microsoft's goal in offering the single Office app is really just for those folks where maybe the individual apps are a little bit overkill for what they need to do. But to be clear, the single Office app and the multiple Office apps offer the same functionality. There's no extra features you're gonna get in one version of Microsoft Word and the standalone version of Microsoft Word. All of those basic features and functionalities are still in the different apps. The biggest difference, of course, comes from the fact that the single Office app does offer some additional actions that you're not gonna find in the individual Office apps. Actually, some of these actions are in the individual Office apps, but they're kind of buried in some submenus and they're not that easy to always find. But if we open up the single Office app here, which is what I'm looking at, and if you tap the, uh, looks like a little stovetop icon in the upper left corner there, this is where you see the page of actions. So you can see at the very top, we can transfer files wirelessly between a computer and uh, the iPad, which is nice. And then the next row there is convert text and images, image to text, extract text from a picture. That's great. Although if you have a, uh, if you've updated your iPhone to iOS 15 or your iPad to iPad OS 15, then that functionality is basically built into the operating system called live text. But nonetheless, it's nice to have it here as well. I guess another option. The image to table could be a nifty option that pulls out uh, a table from your picture and puts it into Excel format. Uh, that can be very useful. Then we have this next area down here where uh, it's a little, a little odd to me because when I think of Microsoft Office, I'm thinking of Word and Excel and PowerPoint, but here we have some PDF functionality. In fact, the single Office app will allow you to open PDF files. You can't edit PDF files here, but you can open them just fine. But you can see I can sign a PDF right here in the single Office app, scan to PDF, uh, scan, it will literally use the iPad's camera to scan a document into a PDF or a picture of some kind or I can just convert a picture into a PDF. Then convert a document to PDF is available in there. You can do that from the individual Office apps as well. It's just, again, it's buried under like a, an export uh, menu there. And then most curious of all, but maybe most helpful to a lot of folks that I work with, I get a lot of questions about 
converting a PDF file to a Word document. For example, a lot of law offices will receive a PDF file that they want to copy some text out of or they want to reuse some of that text in that PDF file. So what they'll do, they want to convert that PDF into a Word document so they can copy the text. And that's built in right here in the single office app. That's really nice and it works pretty amazing as well. Now the curious thing about this again is I do a lot of these functions already. I just use different apps for them. To sign a PDF, I typically would go to PDF Expert from Readle. To scan a PDF, to scan a document to a PDF file, I'll use another app from Readle called Scanner Pro. If I want to convert a document to PDF, I'll have a PDF converter, I think, is an app that I've used. And then there was a separate, complete separate app that I used to use for PDF to Word. But now, all of that functionality is built right here into the single office app. And that's pretty powerful. So the big question is, which one should you use when you need to do some work in Microsoft Office? Well, the good news, first of all, is you can use them all. <laughs> Both the single office app and the individual office apps can live harmoniously on your iPad or your iPhone. You can have them all, especially if you don't, you're not concerned about space on your iPad or iPhone, you can have both the single office app and the multiple office apps. They work actually fairly seamlessly together. You can open a file in one of these apps and then reopen it in another app as well and it works just fine. Personally, I find myself still going to the individual office apps and I, I think there's two quick reasons for that. Number one, I'm probably just used to it. I've been working with those individual apps for a long time and it's just where my muscle memory would go. The second thing is most of the time I'm working on a specific file or document or a presentation and I'm not typically jumping back and forth to other files. Uh, so in other words, if your workflow requires you to look at several documents, Word documents, or maybe reference an Excel spreadsheet, or open a PowerPoint presentation and pull some files, some text from that, or maybe even open a PDF file as well, then the single office app may be a better option for you just because all of that can be done within the app. There is one quasi limitation that I want to bring up for you. If I go into the individual office app, which is the Word app that I'm using right now, I actually can pull up a second instance of Microsoft Word. This is what the iPad calls split view. So if I pull this up now with this Word document, I can now pull my Microsoft Word app from the dock down here. And now I have two instances of the Microsoft Word individual app running in split view on my iPad. This is really nice because I can reference or copy text back and forth from these individual documents that I have here. Now, the thing is you cannot do this with the single Office app. If I were to open up a Word document here from within the single Office app and I try to pull up and add another instance of the single Office app, you can see that it won't work. It won't let me add this. I think Microsoft may eventually allow you to do that, but right now you can't do that. There is a quick workaround though. You can have a single office app instance running here and then I could add actually a second document either from the Microsoft Word app or the Excel app or the PowerPoint app and I could have two different documents open on the screen at the same time. Uh, so on the left side I have the single office app open with Microsoft Word and on the right side I have the individual uh, Microsoft Word app running on the iPad and I can work and reference both of these documents and copy uh, information back and forth. Now it wouldn't surprise me if Microsoft continues to push us into using this single office app and maybe at some point they may do away with the individual office apps. Uh, I hope not. I like the idea that I have some flexibility in being able to work with all of these apps but I could see a day in the near future where Microsoft might just go all in on that single office app. Well, I hope this was a little helpful in helping you to understand the differences between the single office app from Microsoft and the individual office apps from Microsoft. The good news is you can use all of them and install all of them so that you're not restricted to just one or the other. If this was helpful, please give us a thumbs up 
Tell us that you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.